very much thank you to the organizers for inviting me to give a talk about our work. So my lab has been interested in understanding RNA structures for a really long time. And um, in recent years, we have been using nanopore direct RNA sequencing to study RNA structures and its function. Okay. So the work that I'm going to talk about uh, is done by initially by um, Ashley and Sean, a graduate student postdoc, and then continued by Anthony, Jia Xu, and Han Jian, and uh, done in collaboration with Nuranjian. So, to, so we have heard a lot about RNA and RNA modifications, and today I'd like to tell you a little bit more about RNA structure. So RNA holds information in its shape, so very similar to proteins, RNA can fold into complex secondary as well as tertiary structures that's really important for its function. And traditionally, to be able to understand how an RNA folds, uh, we can use a variety of chemical probes that can modify double or single-stranded regions along an RNA, and then we can do uh, capillary sequencing to read out where these double or single-stranded regions are. But over the years, we and many other groups have now coupled this biochemical footprinting together with deep sequencing to read out RNA secondary structures for thousands of RNAs uh, at one time. And this has enabled us um, to look at RNA structures of entire transcriptomes to know what the landscape of these RNA structures look like and how they can change um, ac across different uh, biological organisms as well as disease states. However, one of the challenges that we had when we first started this um, hydro sequencing protocols is that they're typically long and really complex. They take about a week to make the libraries and to to be converted into cDNA and to be sequenced. And also because we started this using short read um, sequencing, a lot of the um, RNA regions that are present in shared exons were unable to identify um, isoform-specific structures. And additionally, RNA can actually form multiple conformations in solution. And again, um, by looking at RNA structures as an aggregate, we are, we are unable to understand how it can form multiple conformations that can have different functions uh, in solution. So we started working um, on this to couple biochemical uh, chemical probing of RNA together with nanopore sequencing to read the RNA structures. And the premise is actually pretty simple. So as the RNA goes through the pore, um, there's a signal, um, as explained by Jonathan just now. And what you can see is that when there's a modification, in this case, not a natural modification, but um, when you add a chemical that modifies all the single-stranded bases along the RNA, when you have a chemical modification, you will have a signal shift. And so we can detect the signal shifts to identify which bases are chemically modified because they're single-stranded. Um, and um, so we applied this on a well-known RNA, so tetrahymena ribozyme. So one of the RNAs we sequenced through without any modification, and this gives us the baseline current. And the other, actually, we have the chemical modification, and we sequence through the nanopore. And upon base calling, mapping, signal alignments, etc., we're able to identify bases that shows a deviation in current because of the chemical modification. So I'm showing you an example of this. So this is the tetrahymena ribozyme, and this is a RNA that has been studied for decades because of its well-known uh, structure that enables it to cleave itself, undergo uh, self-catalysis. And so when in, in a base here, uh, the blue in blue, when it is in a double-stranded context, the chemicals that can modify single-stranded regions will not modify this RNA. And then so you can see the current clouds that belong to modify or unmodify signals look very much similar to each other and they overlap with each other. But when your, um, when your base is in a single-stranded region, it then can be modified by the single-stranded chemical, in this case, NAI shape. And then you can see now the modified clouds look very different from the unmodified clouds. And you, have see th you can see this comet that comes out that we can identify and we can quantitate. And the quantification of that tells us how likely um, that base is to be single-stranded. And then, so this is just a 3D view that you can see um, the separates between the modified and unmodified bases, and we can quantitize, quantify this to give us uh, a single a single strand signal. So we have applied this to the transcriptome of embryonic stem cells to look at how isoform specific structures can how iso how different isoforms from the same gene can have different structures that can impact its regulation, such as translation. But one of the questions that we have was, can we actually now use this to look at single RNA structures at a single molecule level? So um, 
as we, as we know, RNA actually inside the cell goes through many different structural changes. So while the RNA is, is being born, so while other RNA is inside cells being born and is being spliced, it then interacts with RNA binding proteins and then migrate out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm, and then it gets translated, moved to different parts of the cell, and then degraded. And so at any moment inside the cell, your RNA actually exists in multiple different conformations all at the same time. And it's, um, so instead of one structure signal here as an aggregate, it actually really exists in across multiple conformations. And so we are wondering whether we can separate this um, conformation. And actually in addition to um, our group, other groups such as Sylvie Ruskin's group and Danny Incarnado's group have used short resequencing to, re to separate RNA signals along single molecules. But one of the challenges is that because it's short resequencing, so they're restricted to about um, under 300 bases of sequencing. And the ability to separate um, RNA at single molecule level is a function of the density of the RNA modifications and length. So we wanted to see whether nanopore sequencing is able to separate these molecules better. So we first um, went through the different chemical compounds. These are different chemical compounds that's used in the field. All of them can modify single-stranded bases. Some of them are um, at two prime hydroxyls, others at base specific, uh, at, or at specific bases, AUCs or Gs. And then so we identified the chemical compound and the entry at, and the concentration of which that causes the highest amount of modification along the RNA. And then we can, um, uh, along the RNA, and then we can see that, um, and we wanted to see not only if it modifies the RNA, but ideally if it modifies the RNA densely enough, the first modification and the last modification should be spread out along the RNA molecule for us to be able to phase RNA structures along the single molecule. So you can see here we're measuring the um, relative maximum distance of these uh, modifications along a single RNA for the different chemical compounds. And again, we identify NAIN3 to be one of the um, best compounds to do this. But one of the challenges that we have with, with sequencing these RNAs directly that are heavily modified is that they get stuck in the pores. So sometimes they get stuck in the pores, sometimes they go through the pores, but the signals are so distorted because of the mo modifications that we are unable to map them properly. And so we realized that um, we are only able to map about 50% of these um, reads um, properly. And so we wanted a strategy to rescue some of these field reads so that we can align some of the field reads um, by signal level, and we can rescue these field reads to look at RNA uh, structures. So, we, so instead of um, purely relying on um, the signals upon base calling and mapping, now we perform uh, DTW signal alignment, dynamic time warping, and then to rescue the field reads um, and to um, look at those RNA structures. So this is an example whereby we can use signal alignment to rescue some of the field reads, whereby if you have the RNA of, uh, that you expect, the signals align perfectly, but if a random RNA, the signals don't really align. And then across, we had benchmark across um, a few well-known RNA structures, more than 10 of them, and we are able to mix them as a population and split them out according to the structure signals, according to the signals, and then so we can align them according to their signals accurately. And um, here, what I'm showing you is that upon um, minimap to um, alignment, for those that are past, um, past um, the quality control, they can be aligned pretty well. But those that have failed quality control, they don't get mapped well. And these can then be rescued by signal alignment um, to 24 to 28% by signal alignment to, so that we can have um, these reads for structure determination. And as we would expect, the reads that failed the quality control actually have higher number of modifications than the reads that passed um, the quality control. And so um, this is the reason why we use signal alignment. Okay. So one of our, um, to, to show that we're able to separate RNA structures according to single molecule, according to a single molecule, we had very similar to what Jonathan had described, we had mixed two different populations of RNA. A ribose switch will change structure in the presence of a ligand. So um, when it, it falls into one conformation in the absence of a ligand, and when it gives it a ligand um, of, uh, that it recognizes, it will then switch its conformation into a second conformation. 
uh, population. And so we mix in 50% of um, the ribosage without the ligand, as well as 50% of the ribosage with the ligand, and then to see whether we're able to separate out um, these two structural populations based on their single molecule signals. So you can see this is up in, uh, uh, on top is the truth. Um, you have in white, you have the modification along each individual molecule of the RNA. And below, when you mix the two, we're able to separate them out according to the appropriate structures, as you would expect. And this is, and we achieve very similar results. Um, so we can separate into two different populations, and we achieve this uh, to very similar results um, using nanopore sequencing as um, what has been previously reported using DMS, MAP, and Illumina sequencing um, by the other groups. So, um, yeah, so that is the end of my talk. And with that, I'd like to thank you. We have also tested 004 on our ability to detect RNA structure modifications. And um, it works actually beautifully. So we, we do have more throughput, and we are also able to detect the RNA modifications really well um, according to the signal shifts using um, RNA004. Yeah, so with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'll take any questions. Thank you.